Welcome to My Long Island TV. From Manhasset to Montauk, we have traveled our communities to bring you the following events. I'm your host, Waldo Cabrera. Get ready, My Long Island TV starts now. Welcome to the Corwith House Museum, part of the Bridgehampton Historical Society. This is our headquarters and our main exhibition space. And the exhibit we have here is on whaling. It's actually called Bridgehampton Whaling, A Farmer's Life at Sea. And it celebrates those local people who went out to sea on long voyages, two, three, sometimes four years long, in hopes of riches and adventure. Whaling in, in this country began the late 18th century and um, in Sag Harbor, which was our major whaling port, uh, it was really finished by 1856, maybe 1860, the latest. This exhibit, unlike our other exhibit at the Archives Building, is specifically about whaling. Deep sea, at sea whaling. People who went to sea on the large whaling vessels, whether it was a whaling ship or a bark, um, and they stayed on the ship and they lived on the ship for two or three years at a time. They were away from home, there were no, no amenities, uh, the crew lived in horrible conditions, their food was often rancid, filled with cockroaches, their bunks were filled with bed bugs, um, the ship was full of rats, and the people who really made a lot of money were the ship owners and the captains if the ship got back safely. Most people who went whaling, unless you were a captain or wanted to be a captain, went on one trip and then came home. It's often been said if you went once, you were just a regular person. If you went twice, you were either foolish um, or very brave. If you went three times, you were probably running from the law. Certainly the ship itself was their home and their tool. It was designed to carry a crew of anywhere from 20 to 30, even 40 people, depending on the size of the ship. It had big tripods right on deck where the uh, whale would be carved up alongside the ship, hauled up into the tripods, the oil boiled out, poured into cooling casks or barrels, and then poured into storage barrels and then brought below deck. They also would have had uh, whale boats, small boats, maybe 20 to 24 foot long whale boats uh, that a crew of four to six would get in and actually chase down the whale. Whales have very good hearing, so they would have to paddle very quietly, very carefully, or use sails to come up close to the ship. They would strike a harpoon into it um, that really fastened the boat to the whale. And the whale would, of course, take off out of fear and anger and there would be a long line or rope between the harpoon attached to the whale and the whale boat, and that was called a Nantucket sleigh ride. Then the boat would pull itself up next to the boat and start cutting it with lances in an attempt to make it bleed to death. Sharks might be swimming around, taking out big chunks. Um, whales would start to decay very quickly, especially in the South Pacific where it's hot and the water was warm. So the men worked furiously every time they caught a whale. Everybody got a share of the profits. The captain got a certain percentage, his first mate, second mate, third mate got a percentage. The harpooners, who were really important, you couldn't kill a whale unless you had a good harpooner, they got a percentage, but again lower. Finally you got into the seamen, um, you know, the able-bodied seamen, seamen apprentice, and then the cabin boys. And the lower down you went in the hierarchy, the less you made. And the owner, of course, who put up all the expense, who, who bought the ship or had the ship built, got all the supplies, paid for everything, all the equipment, they got the majority of the profit. But they took, the, they took all the risk, except for their lives. They stayed home. There are a few nations in the, in the world who still whale. Most people in this country are against whaling. And yet there was a time in our history when we were the biggest whalers in the world. Uh, and we did it for tremendous economic gain. Tremendous wealth was made from whaling. Um, it's all disappeared from this nation, um, really when kerosene and, and oil were discovered because it made whale oil unnecessary. If you'd like to learn more about the Historical Society or about this whaling exhibit, you can visit us at www.bridgehamptonhistoricalsociety.org 
or give us a call at 631-537-1088.